Well, first of all, uh, Chancellor and President Samoya, uh, thank you for reaching out to our graduates and thank you for bringing to this university a new graduate who I've known about for years. Uh, it's always an occasion uh, when U of T gives an honorary degree, but it's not always a historic occasion as today is. It's historic because the world changed on the morning of August 6th, 1945, when the first atomic bomb exploded over Hiroshima, to be followed by a second over Nagasaki. This constituted the first use in all of history of nuclear weapons in war. Setsuko Thurlow, a 13-year-old schoolgirl, was in Hiroshima that morning, pretty close to where the bomb landed. It's a miracle that she's here with us today. Three quarters of a century later, now, this remains the first and only use of nuclear weapons in war. Along with Setsuko, we ask ourselves here what we can do to make it the last. Since then, nuclear weapons have become a thousand times more destructive, more numerous, more varied, and horrible to relate, more accepted. For a while, alarm at the consequences of nuclear war was widespread. It led to international disarmament agreements, of which today the ragged ends remain. Instead, we're relying on people's raised voices. Among them are scientists, like me. Among them, Setsuko, who at 13 already had the instincts of a scientist. I've read that when she was suddenly found herself propelled into that nightmare following the dropping of the A-bomb, she held back her tears. Instead, she chose to observe and draw conclusions. She determined to devote herself to ending that danger, and we honor her today for that, and shall continue to. We should take heart from the success of earlier great movements of reform such as the ban on the slave trade. For 20 years, starting in the 1780s, William Wilberforce, whose name I hope you know, urged Britain's House of Commons to enact that ban on slave trading. His fellow MPs mocked him, but he persisted. Posterity, he said, will scarce believe there existed such a disgrace and dishonor to this country. He was talking about England. And he presented bill after bill to the House of Commons to end the slave trade. And bill after bill was roundly defeated, but ultimately reason and compassion prevailed. On February 23rd, 1807, the abolition bill outlawing the slave trade was carried, and it's worth mentioning by how much even Setsuko may be surprised. It was carried by 283 votes to 16 opposed. William Wilberforce, who originated that bill, and Setsuko must have a fellow feeling with him, watched from his seat in the House of Commons his face streaming with tears. Today, Setsuko and her friends 
offer the world a contemporary abolition bill in which nations forswear the use of nuclear weapons. Once again, this seems to be an impossible goal. But to think so is to give up on humanity. Not so, said Suko and her companions in what is known as the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. They serve, as many people said today, as an inspiration to us all, as does our honoree, Dr. Setsuko Thurlow. Thank you all for coming.